So what I'm intending to do here is show you how to make a powerful special effect material for use with HDRI and the thing about this material is that it will render very quickly in the setup that I'm going to show you how to do. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is create what uh, Horo has named a hypertexture and this is an extreme negative output to feed into the value of the material channel. I'm going to select everything in this scene. Well, it's already selected. At the moment we've just got the default lighting, but that will be modified later on. We're going to start with the material properties. So, this is a default grey material. You can get default grey just by clicking that button there. But if you've created things, then they often have this material to start with. And we're going to set it up in a specific way. And I'm going to need something to create extreme negative reflection. So I'll put a blob in this channel here and I'm going to use the library so hold the shift key down click on the name go to basic use check blue and modify this in the deep texture editor so I'll go into the texture source editor and just click on these corner blobs we want the noise function we want this to be distance squared mode minimum I believe yes good right octaves one I have to make these videos because I'm always forgetting this stuff and a frequency of minus one right so that gives a frequency of minus one check out of that turn off color and bump and you'll see you get this stripy pattern now that's a good sign this shows that the preview is not capable of showing you this level of output. This is actually a very high negative value that's been generated. So, just to recap, the type wants to be distance squared, the mode wants to be minimum, octaves of 1. Don't worry about uh, changing these and it's 3D automatically anyway if you've started from the same starting point as I have, and frequency of minus 1. So, essentially now, our work here is done in this uh, deep texture editor. You can now check out of there and you don't have to worry about making any modifications to that. We do need to check here that we have alpha scaling engaged. So, we'll click on that and you'll see, if you now look again, that we've got a check mark next to alpha scaling. That's very important. The value in reflection, because we're using this uh, to scale this very high value. The value we're looking for here is 0.02, which is the lowest value of reflection it's possible to have. We don't need diffuse output. Now if you hold the Alt key down and click on the color swatch, it allows you to enter the RGB values for what you need in here, and that is 1, 1, 1. So not quite black, and that's important because even that little bit of a difference will, will make all the difference. In the specular channel here, we need full white, and it already is that, but in the specular halo channel we want almost full white, but not quite. Again, that little bit of difference makes all the difference with respect to this material. So you can see now we've got this sort of effect, which is a bit odd, and uh, the, the final thing that needs to be added in to create the effect I'm looking for is to give it 100 transparency. Now you can see things have changed again and by turning up the refraction you get some grazing angle reflection. So now I've got grazing angle reflection and, uh, and a mixture of uh, super negative reflection and these specular halo settings which uh, which might seem a little bit odd. You might think that well the, there's no specular and metallicity and no diffuse involved here but when you apply transparency and reflection, to some degree, these settings are involved. There's a bit of automation in the way that Bryce works, and it does include these settings, so it's important to have these set as I've described. Now I've set the materials up, we can look at the lighting. So, in the default lighting, this is the situation. What we're going to do is replace our lighting with image-based lighting, and so I'm going to go into the Skylab, and it's going to Sun and Moon, and we can turn the shadow casting off. That's the global control. So if I go into image based lighting and use a HDRI image, and I'm going to use one from uh, a product of Horror and I made, the uh, Deep Space uh, HDRI scenes, and this is from the first one. So I'm just going to load in the um, medium resolution version. So that's given us that. And now I'm going to turn down the quality setting. I don't really need a very high setting. It'll allow it to render very quickly. 
I need user's background, well it's done that automatically but I want to add it to the sky and then check out of here and turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully black so we just have the influence of the image. At the moment nothing much is happening. So we have got the options to turn the intensity up and that will work with the reflection on our material. Inside this control here there's apply to light source and that works as a multiplier with these values. Now even though HDR images don't give out a great deal of specularity because of the extreme uh, hyper texture used in the material this material will respond to specularity but in a negative sense. It will respond to HDRA effect in a positive sense so you can use these two to balance one another and to some extent the specularity will balance what's reflected. So I'm going to turn the reflection up and you can see you get a bit of a glowing effect down here then the HDRI effect up and you can see now the scenes all but vanished. However if we start bringing the specularity in now this is subtracting from the scene and we start to get some of the effect we're looking for. So you've got to uh, experiment with these settings to see you get a nice effect. So if it looks like it's getting too light bring more specularity in or if it's getting too dark bring more HDRI effect in. The higher these two values start to get the more contrast you will see in your scene. So if you want a lot of contrast you work with high values and if you don't want very much contrast you want the effect to be more subtle work with lower values. This control here is not going to do anything now because the shadows have been turned off globally but I'm going to turn it off anyway just to be on the safe side and the other thing to consider is because we're only using a quality of 16 then the sampling of the HDR image which was a complete sphere that's wrapped around our scene providing the light sources the simulated light sources this is going to uh, change dramatically when we move it around. So if I move this around you can see it'll start getting uh, different effects. So this is the other thing, to, depending on the HDRI image that you've got to use, uh, whether it's this one or another one, it doesn't really matter, then um, it would be nice if you used one of ours, because obviously that would help us sell some products, but it's really irrelevant as far as this effect is concerned. So you roll your HDRI image around till you have something you like the look of and then you can modify the settings to create the effect you are looking for. So I rather like to get these glowing outlines and uh, you can see now I'm turn turning the intensity up because it's acting as a multiplier between these two effects as it, it, also adding contrast to this effect. So this is uh, quite an interesting result I think. So let's put it in this region for example check out of here and have a quick render and this is the point this is only going to take seconds to render the anti-aliasing pass it may take a little longer but it's still not significant render times for what I consider to be quite an interesting and unusual effect with these, uh, with these glowing outlines and high, high impact reflections uh, obviously for final rendering you would probably better off using a, a high resolution HDRI image it will take more room up in the source file but you won't see the obvious pixelation that you see in this uh, reflected backdrop at the moment or you could do away with using the ground plane as part of the effect and I suppose that choice is yours. So I'm just going to roll this around and show you a few more of the possible options. You don't have to employ the apply to light source you can, you can, do, you can do without that and you'll have different effects as a result of that scaling. So for example, this is a bit more a low-key affair that uh, uses more of the reflection. Let me just bring the. You might struggle for specularity effect uh, if you uh, if you don't use the scaling, but you still get some good results from that. So then again, you see uh, created another sort of different effect by just uh, moving the HDRI image around and scaling accordingly. So well. There you go, really. That's the end of the video. I hope you found that interesting and that you'll experiment with these uh, hyper textures, these out of range materials in your own renders.